Saints in the Virginia and surrounding areas. Our next road trip, Lord willing, will be October 15th and 16th. We'll be coming to Newport News, Virginia. We'll be at the Holiday Inn Hotel, 980 Omni Boulevard, right there in Newport News, Virginia. On that Saturday, October 15th, we will have a Q&A session from one until three. From one until three will be questions and answering uh, of the scripture. And service will begin, Lord willing, at 6 p.m. Service will begin at 6 p.m. on that Saturday. And Lord willing, on Sunday, October 16th, service will begin at 11 a.m. So Virginia, we're looking forward to being there with you all. After that, we'll be back in Atlanta, Georgia again. October 29th and 30th, we will be at uh, the Double Tree Hotel again. We was there this past weekend, and we'll be back there for Fifth Weekend Fellowship on October 29th and the 30th. On that Saturday, uh, October 29th, service will begin at 6 p.m. Elder Ellis out of Fayette, Mississippi, will be speaking on that Saturday evening at 6. And Lord willing, on that Sunday morning, October 30th, I will be speaking at 11 a.m. Again, 4156 La Vista Road, Tucker, Georgia, next October 29th and the 30th. After that, we'll be in Montego Bay, Jamaica. That's Montego Bay, Jamaica on November 6th and November 27th. Now, I will pay close attention to you all that will be attending the service in Jamaica. The Holiday Inn Resort is where all services will take place. The Holiday Inn has informed me that anyone attending the service in Jamaica, if you're not staying at the resort, you must register, which simply consists of you giving your name. All right? They informed me this on Monday that anyone coming from the island, or coming from anywhere, if you're not staying at the resort, they must have your name in advance so that when you get to the gate, your name is there and they'll allow you to come on through, all right? Simply send us your name. They made it plain to us that it is our responsibility, the church, to present the names of all those that will be attending, okay? So you can email us your name, uh, email address is over my shoulder, or you can call it to my office. Just get us your name if you plan on attending the service. If you're thinking about attending, go ahead and present your name so we can give your name to the resort so that your name could be at the gate so you're clear to come on into the service. It don't cost nothing, it's free. They simply ask, for names of the ones that will be attending the service. This is their rule, it's not Ella Murray's rule. It's their rule, all right? So you that are staying at the resort, you don't have to worry about that. You already registered by being at the resort. But anyone that's not staying, some of the saints here in the States have told me they're going over to Jamaica with me. They're from Jamaica, they have family in Jamaica. Some have houses in Jamaica. You will need to send your name because you're not staying at the resort, all right? Anyone not staying at the resort, send us your name. Email it to me. All you got to do is say, this is my name. I will be attending the services in Jamaica. We will forward that list of names to the hotel, all right? So make sure you govern yourselves according to that. They informed me of this on this past Monday. All right, we have a form here for those who are going to the service, who are, well, for those who will be staying at the resort. I've received calls in my office, some trying to make uh, re reservations at the hotel, and they're being told different things. Well, they emailed us a form. If you are going and you want the church discount, the church block discount, you must contact the church, just email us, call us, ask us for a form, we will email you the form. All you have to do is fill your form out. This is the way they register for the hotel, for you staying there. You fill out the information on here, choose the type of room that you wish to stay in,
the room rates start at $199 per night. We have these forms here. You can email the church, call the church, email our secretary. I thank her to Son of God Alive. What is it? Son Alive 20 at gmail.com. If not, just email the main uh, email address over my shoulder. And we'll get a form emailed to you, mailed to you. However, we'll get it to you so you can fill out the form. You can get the discounted rate that has uh, been given to the church. All right? Govern yourselves according now. We'll be making these announcements as time progress. All right? We thank God, saints, for all things. Let me also say I want to thank God for a beautiful trip this past weekend to Atlanta, Georgia. We certainly had a good time with Bishop Bryant and the saints. It was good to see some for the first time we had never met before. It was good to get a chance to meet all of you all. We thank God for those that was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Brother CeeLo, we certainly thank God for him. Uh, he went down in war in the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor Crawford of North Carolina, he went back to war in the name of Jesus Christ. Just wanted to make sure he got it right by a believer in the Son of God. Young brother used to be a seven-day Adventist, 18 years old. He went down in war. We thank God for all of them. We certainly do thank God for how the Lord is opening his people's understanding. All right? Beautiful trip, beautiful fellowship there at the park. A lot of food, a lot of just had a good time, good environment. We thank God for all of those that travel from all the different states that was represented there. We certainly thank God for all of you all. All right? Now, tonight, I have a ton of emails, and I have a whole lot of calls in my office. Now, I'm going to answer as many as time will allow. We may not get them all. I've gotten God knows how many emails since I've been at the church sitting in my office. Be patient with me, saints. Be patient with me, all right? We will be answering them as quickly as we can, but keep in mind, I get a lot of them from around the world. So just please be patient with us. But let me say a few things first before we get into the emails or the calls. Give me Titus, basic chapter one. <clears throat> Titus chapter one. And I want to start reading at verse four. We've got to set some things in order. Titus one four said what? To Titus, my own son, after the common faith. Paul said to Titus, my own son, after the common faith. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. What did he say, Brace? For this cause left I thee in Crete. For this cause left I thee where? In Crete. That what? That thou, may should, that thou should have set in order the things that are wanting. What did he tell Titus to do? Set in order the things that are wanting. What did he tell Titus to do? Set in order the things that are wanting. Saints of God, we've got to set some things in order tonight. I want everybody to pay attention. Going forth from this point forward at this church and wherever we travel to in any of our fellowships, if you testify, testifying testimonies will be limited to three minutes. That's for everybody. You've got three minutes to testify. That's it. Now, we're put in a position where we've got to set things in order. We give brothers who's conducting praise service instruction almost before every service. Let the saints know, consider the other saints of God. If you're going to sing, we got a full house, a packed house like we had in Atlanta. If you're going to sing, sing. If you're going to testify, testify. Don't do both because we want to be considerate of the other people. You want to give them an opportunity as well. They say it plainly. And most saints adhere to it. But you're always going to have some that is going to get the mic and going to go on and on and on and on. It is disrespectful. To the brothers who just gave instruction, it's disrespectful to the other saints in the service who wish to testify or sing as well. It's disrespectful. We're not going to tolerate that. The Bible said for the elder to set things in order 
and we're doing that tonight. I'm setting it in order for all those that are here in Alabama and those that are as part of this ministry. When you testify, limit your testimony to three minutes. If you start going on and on and on, the brothers conducting praise service simply going to say, God bless you. God bless you means shut it down. Shut it down now. Do you understand? All things the Bible teaches us to be done must be done decently and in order. That's what the Bible said. Now, if you've got a spirit that you can't control, then you don't need to testify. Do you understand? Testimony service is not designed for sisters to get their many sermons in. It's not. Do you understand? That's not what it's designed for. We don't believe in women preachers, not even in testimony service. We don't believe in them at all, at no time. Now, a lot of y'all, when the benediction is given, you can go home and you can lay down and you can go to sleep and forget all about it. But an elder, the Lord troubles me. He troubles me because it's not in order. And he left instructions for us as elders to set things in order. And that's what we're doing tonight. I want to rest that night just like y'all. I don't want the Lord riding my back. And if a thing is not in order, he rides my back. For, read that again, son. For this cause of I thee increase. What? That thou should have set in order the things that are wanted. And do what? And ordain elders in every city. Set in order the things that are what? That are wanting. Wanting means lacking or out of order. Set it in order. And it, 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 look, I'm not concerned about who feelings get hurt. I'm not concerned about who disagree. We don't care. We don't care. It's got to be in order. First Corinthians son, 14 and 40. First Corinthians 14 and at verse 40. I want you to hear me talking now. What did it say, son? Let all things be done decently and in order. Did it say all things? All things. All things except testimony, sir. Let all things be done decently and in order. We want to encourage the saints to testify. Encourage saints to sing praises unto God. But it's got to be done in order now. Mm -hmm. Ain't no, listen, it's out of order for a sister to get up 10, 15 minutes with the mic in her hand. We're not going to do that. Do you understand? It's out of order, and we're not going to do it. Hear me talk. Brothers either. We're not going to do that now. From this point forward, and Bishop Bryan is dealing with the same thing in Atlanta tonight. The same thing. We discussed it. We're on one accord. Listen, Bishop Bryan and Murray, we're one. I said we're one. We're in agreement. We're on one accord. In order. It's not fair. You got a full house and one person take 15 minutes. What about the others that wish to testify? What about the others that want to sing a song? It's got to be done in order. I want to sleep at night as well. Saints, we thank God for all things. Y'all keep us in your prayers. All right, brothers and sisters, tonight, again, we got a whole lot, a whole lot to try to cover tonight. I'm going to get the phone calls out of my office first, and Lord willing, we'll proceed on from there. We've got a whole lot of them, and, you know, we've been sitting in my office there, and the calls kept coming and kept coming and kept coming, and I know people, you know, want to hear their questions. They want to, you know, hear their email, but y'all have to be patient because I've got, I've got, there's no way I can cover all that I have in a broadcast, not even two or three broadcasts. So just, just be patient with us. All right? Y'all listen carefully to this first caller. He's out of the UK, United Kingdom. Twin, let caller five and six play. Don't stop it. Let it play. Praise the Lord, Elvis. This is... Um Brother Blake from the UK, just calling you in regards to a situation I had with my wife who's left our church about six years ago and she's joined First Church uh, with Gino Jennings. 
um, since she's left, uh, I've noticed that uh, she she doesn't respect me at all. She thinks I'm not saved, even though I'm baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. She believes you can only be saved on the Geno Jennings. Um, she disrespects my word when I tell her not to do something. She does it. Uh, she does the total opposite. If I show her scriptures regarding the error that uh, Mr. Jennings is making, she tells me, well, it's a mystery and refers me back to him to go, go and see him. He was in the UK a uh, fortnight ago and um, she just tells me to go and see him if, if, she, if I'm happy. The home life terrible now. We've been married over 30 years, got children and grandchildren. Um, but she, she just got compliance. I'm not saying it in a way to, to mean disrespectful, but as a husband that looks after her, provides for her, gives her a home, a, a wonderful life. But when it comes to anything spiritual, um, it's, it's something that she doesn't listen to me at all. She's spending her money on the church. I believe that she's given thousands of thousands of pounds. Um, over the next couple of years, um, a pledge that she's doing, I think about £13,000 she's committed to. She didn't inform me about it, she just went ahead and did it. So it's been a very hard time uh, with her. You know, she, she doesn't relay anything back to me. She doesn't come to speak to me about her church and her church rules. She just does it. You know, so I, if I notice something, whether she, she takes her rings off or or just the you know the different things that she's doing for the church, I'll have to ask her a question, and then she will tell me, well, the church says this and the church says that. I find it quite frustrating. As I say, um, home life is not the same because of it. Um, two can't walk together. I still agree, um, and I'm a believer in the Son of God in the in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, and he's coming back again. I believe all that. And I know day church don't believe in that. So it's very difficult to have a relationship with, with, with your wife unless she has a totally different belief. And I really believe that she's bewitched um, by this doctrine of Gina Jennings. Thursday, 8.39 a.m. Hi, Pastor, it's me again, um, Brother Blake from the U.K., I just got to say, what advice have you for me? I know you, you was in that in that um, organization for so many years, and you got out of it. But how can I pull my wife out of it? Every time I try to help her, to, to help her to see the scripture and and, and uh, look at other things, she, she just referred me back to to Jennings, and she's and she says it's not for her to to look at scriptures or to to expand on scriptures. He's the man. Uh, I've got to go through him, and you know I'm living a Christian life, and we've got a Christian home. But she she doesn't obey the word of her husband. She doesn't honor me. She's very I find her very secretive now, you know. So I just want some advice from you, um, which which is a practical way to go with this, because as I say, it's been six years now, and uh, it's not getting any better. It's getting worse. And she's committed herself to it. Um, she's like um, the blind leading the blind in my eyes. And you know, it, the scripture talks about these um, silly women being led astray. And I believe that she's one of these silly women caught up in the, in the worshiping the creature more than the creator. So I just want some advice from you, um, Pastor Murray. Um, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in need of some help. Your advice would be grateful. I'm in the UK. I don't know if there's any churches that you correspond in the UK. But I would like to know if there is. I've been saved over 30 other years now. And I'm striving to enter into God's rest. And I'm just praying, oh God, that, um, you know, that my prayer can turn around, that God opens up to understanding that she may come out of this. Pray for me much. In Jesus' name. You can call me on this number if you want to talk to me. In Jesus' name. Give you thanks. Pray for me. Amen. Let me say to my brother in the UK, my heart go out to you, brother.
I mean, my heart go out to you. I feel your pain. I feel your pain, brother. And my advice to you is keep praying and fasting for your wife. Keep praying and fasting for her that the Lord will open her understanding. And keep talking to her, brother. Keep talking to her. You say you think she's bewitched. Well, brother, it's not a matter of thinking. I've been there, brother. Not only your wife, but most of the people there are bewitched. Most of the people there are brainwashed. Most of them. But the word of God is presently delivering his people out of bed. Remember, Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice and a stranger they won't follow. If your wife belonged to Jesus Christ, some way, somehow, the Lord is going to allow her to hear truth and deliver her out of first church foolishness. If she belonged to Jesus, it's got to happen. But brother, keep praying for, her, keep fasting for, her, and keep talking to her. Keep talking to her. And we was in Atlanta, my brother, and I say this for your comfort. We was in Atlanta this past weekend. And that was a brother I met for the very first time by the name of Brother CeeLo. Brother CeeLo was a faithful follower of First Church and Geno Jennings. CeeLo testified, I wish we had a recorded his testimony. I would post it on our site, but we didn't record it. And I say any of the saints that was there, if any of y'all recorded Brother CeeLo's testimony, get it to me. Because I believe it will help this brother as well as many other people. Brother CeeLo testified Sunday how he was a follower of First Church, Geno Jennings. Faithful follower, faithful. He testified how one of his brothers at First Church, Tony Harvey, posted a video of Elder Murray. He told the congregation how Tony took that video and how he edited it and spiced it, diced it to try to make me look bad, try to make me look like a fool, like a false prophet. So he told the congregation when his brother, Tony, posted a video, he was simply going to view the video that his brother had posted. He said when he watched the video of us preaching the word of God, the brother told his congregation how he tried to shake it. He said he tried to shake it. Is that what he said? That's what he said. He said, I, I tried to shake it. He let us know he didn't want to come this way. He said he tried all he could to shake what he had heard from the so-called false prophet. But the word of God stands true. My sheep will hear my voice. Amen. And a stranger, you just can't follow. Now, Tony meant that for bad. But I'm so glad God meant it for good. The brother testified how he couldn't shake it. He told the congregation that he would be headed to First Church and said when he would get close to the church, he'd be listening to our broadcast all the way to church. He said, but when he got close, turning the corner, he said he would turn it off. He didn't want the other saints to hear him listening to Ella Bird. He said, but as soon as he got out, got back in his vehicle, he'll crank it right back up. And he did that for a while until the Lord delivered him out of there. Brother CeeLo went down in water this past Sunday in the name of Jesus Christ by a believer in the Son of God. Mm -hmm. That he did. I say to you, my brother, try to encourage her some way, somehow, to listen to the broadcast. Listen to the word of God. Keep praying for her, brother. Don't give up on her. Keep praying for her. If she belong to the Lord, or will reach her. The Lord will deliver her. 
if she belonged to Jesus Christ. It's not a matter of if you can't, it's a matter of when. Just give it time. These calls, brothers and sisters, now I'm going to tell you something. I don't air calls like this often. I don't. I don't. But I, I add this one tonight for a reason. So many say to me, why don't you just leave that alone? Don't, don't worry about that. A lady called my office probably 15 minutes ago and laid me out. Laid me out good fashion for manifesting this falsehood at First Church. That was only about 15, 20 minutes ago. I add that tonight so the world can hear and see. This is what's called to me all the time. People needing help. People trying to get out of that foolishness. In this case, it's this brother's wife. Now, I want you to think about it. You heard him say how his wife don't respect him, don't honor him. Is that the word of God? The word teaches the wife to reverence her husband. Mm. So you done got tied up in a religion that's got you doing opposite of what the scripture says. He talked about all the money. He called it pounds, all the pounds she given to First Church without his consent. Total opposite of what the word of God is saying. Mm. So you done got tied up in a religion, in a spirit that's got you going contrary to what's written in the Bible. And you want to say it's of God. And when your husband try to talk to you, you tell him, oh, you got to talk to the man of God. When your husband try to show you scripture, you tell him it ain't your place to be looking in the scripture. I want you to think about how foolish that is. If a man can convince you to close the Bible and just go by what his mouth said, that man can lead you straight to hell. Mm -hmm. Straight to hell. So, brother, it's not a matter you think she's bewitched. She is bewitched. Not her. A whole lot of them are bewitched. This is clear cut. Simon the sorcerer. There's no other way to put it. Y'all heard his call. You didn't hear the call Friday. You didn't hear that one when I was on the road. The only difference Friday, it was a sister calling. A sister calling, that's a doctor. And testify how her husband got tied up in that first church foolishness. And their marriage is going down. It's in trouble. She, she pulled over to talk to me. She said, our marriage is in trouble. So this man, all our years of marriage, he's at a point of just giving it all up to follow Gino. Go sacrifice everything to follow a dude. That was Friday. I got that one Friday. It's, it's all the time. People trying to escape out of that foolishness. And folks that just leave it alone. Let me tell you something. I have a heart for God's people. And I'm going to do all I can to help them. I was checking out at Walmart. Sister's checking me out at the cash register. She knew God delivered me out of that foolishness. She asked me at the cash register with folks in line behind us, can you, what, what can you do? What can we do? What, what can we do to get our sister out of that? This was at the cash register at Walmart. Do you understand? We was in a, a, another church location over there. A man walked through the door. Never seen a man before in my life. He wanted to meet with me after church. Went in the office, asked me, my son is tied up in their coat over there. What can I do to get my, my child out of there? He's been separated from the family. He don't deal with the family no more. I get this stuff all the time. I got a call from a city official out of the city of Pritchard. Called my phone. Told me my family is tied up over there. They have nothing else to do with the family. What can we do? What's going on with, over there? I get them all. You said leave it alone? Just let, let them be brainwashed. Let them be ripped off and robbed. I don't have that kind of heart. I don't have it. Maybe you can sleep at night, but I can't. When I see God's people in trouble and folks crying out for help, let me tell you something, it troubles me. It troubles me. I'm going to do all I can to help all of God's people. I'm not afraid of them devils. None of them. 
You're dealing with the spirit of Simon the Sorcerer. 8, 9, son, Acts. Acts chapter 8 and at verse 9. What did it say, son? This is the spirit that you're dealing with. Acts 8, 9, what did it say? But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery. What did he use? Sorcery. No, he used the word of God. Used sorcery. What did he do, Bracey? And bewitched the people of Samaria. Oh, he did what with the people? Bewitched the people of Samaria. That, you know what bewitched me? That hoodoo. Mm-hmm. That's witchcraft. Mm-hmm. What did he convince them of? Giving out that himself was some great one. Himself? Himself. Himself? Himself. Do that sound familiar? Amen. Not Jesus Christ is a great one. My God, but himself is a great one. Do that sound familiar to y'all? Amen. That's the spirit you're dealing with, UK. But the Lord is able to deliver your wife, brother. That's right. He's able to deliver your wife. Keep praying for her. Keep talking to her. My God, keep her before the Lord. And keep looking. Try to get her to hear the broadcast. Play it in your house. And perhaps, my God, she can hear something that will quicken her mind. Amen. Call her number eight, twin. Call her number eight, son. Once you get it, let it out. Yeah. Uh, Elder Murray, uh, this is Jeffrey Drake in Tennessee. Uh, we talked a couple times before. Um, I had a question um, that's been presented to me. The why did um, they tell them to tarry until uh, he come to fill them with the Holy Ghost? Uh, I'm pretty sure you know what scripture I'm talking about. Um, I, I heard you preach about it time before, I just don't remember what, what was said again. Um, why did they t- had to go and carry in uh, Samaria, I believe it is, until he came? Uh, if you can give me an answer on that, I appreciate it. Thank you. Give me Luke 24, Brace. Luke 24, son, around about verse 49. Let's help McCauley here. He want to know why did Jesus say to them to tarry until you're being due with power from a high. Luke 24, 49, what did it say? And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Jesus said, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Until when? Until ye be endued with power from on high. Why did Jesus say that, caller? Because, look, he, according to the scripture, the Holy Ghost could not come until after Jesus departed. So he told them to go to Jerusalem and tarry, stay right there in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. That was the instruction that was given to them. Don't leave Jerusalem until you get the gift of the Holy Ghost. He made it plain in John 16 and 7. Give me that, son. Jesus is going to make it plain that the Holy Ghost can't come until he leaves. You understand? So they had to tarry, wait in Jerusalem. He was there talking with them in Luke 24, 49, when he told them to tarry in Jerusalem. My God, but the Holy Ghost couldn't come until after he left. What did it say, son? John 16, 7, what did it say? Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. It is necessary. It's expedient for you that I go away. Well, if I go not away. If I go not away. The comforter will not come unto you. The comforter will not come unto you. In Luke 24, 49, when he said, tarry in Jerusalem until you've been due with power from on high, he was still present under there talking to them. Holy Ghost can't come until after he physically leaves. Read that again. What did it say? Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. What? It is expedient for you that I go away. That I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. If I don't go away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart. If I depart. I will send him unto you. I will send him unto you. So in Luke 24, 49, after he departed, brother. He had told them to tarry in Jerusalem until they be endued with power from on high. Give me Acts 2 and 1 now. 
They over at Jerusalem. Jesus done departed. The Bible said what? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. What happened? They were all with one accord in one place. And what happened? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty as wind. As of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And what happened to embrace it? And there appeared unto them cloven tongues. Cloven tongues. Like as a fire. Like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. Read it. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with what? The Holy Ghost. It couldn't come, call them, until after, until after Jesus departed. So this is the reason why they was told to tarry in Jerusalem until you been been due with power from on high. Let me say this here also. It comes to mind in the, the person that I was talking to on Friday, whose husband and got tied up, got bewitched in first church. This sister actually asked me. She said, there should be some type of platform or something. I forget how she worded it, where all of us companions or family or whatever that's going through this could be, should be able to communicate with one another. I mean, it was that serious with her. You know, when, when I returned her call, she had left a message for me to call her. I returned her call while I was traveling. I do that a lot of times because I have a lot of time to talk. But she pulled over, she told me, she was driving, she pulled over to talk to me. And when she was saying it should be like a talk group or something, for all of them that's going through this, with, with these folks that are brainwashed. The Bible talks about in the book of Jude, how they're sensual, devilish, separating themselves. That's what Jude said. And, and in most of these family members, my God, I'm told by these family members how the ones that's tied up in that cult, how they separate from the family. They have nothing to do with nobody but those that's in the cult. It, it's, 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 it's sad. It's truly sad. And these people call Elder Murray day and night for him because they know I've been there. I've been there. Your help is in Jesus Christ. That's where your help is at. Hear the word, believe in Jesus Christ, Keep praying for them. Keep crying out to the Lord for them. If they belong to Jesus, they got to come out. They got to come out. If they don't come out, then the word of God then fell to the ground. And not one jot or tit of this is going to fall to the ground. All right? Caller number nine, twin. Caller number nine. Once you get number nine, let it go, brother. Mr. Murray, this is Shirley Ann of Anderson, South Carolina. I don't really like talking on the phone, and when I do, I get nervous because I just don't like talking on the phone. But I have a question, and I know you've been busy, and I know you said you can call me back, and but I'm, I may forget my question. So, um, and also, I listen to you on YouTube, but me and my daughter, and I, unfortunately, you don't have a church in Anderson. I wish you did because I'll be there every day. And, uh, but, um, me and my daughter, we miss going to church. So we went to visit the church Sunday and they have a scripture on the wall. And I, and it's in the Bible. I know it's in the Bible because it says something like, um, he that believeth on me as the scripture has said, out of their mouth shall flow, out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. My question is, okay, like today I had, um, issue with my dishwasher. I think maybe when I don't cut my um, garbage disposal, um, it sometimes costs the water to come out of the dishwasher without the dishwasher being on. And so it happened today, and it was just blowing out the bottom, and it brought that scripture back to me. And so, and I don't read that scripture in the Bible before, but I've been really seriously praying for the Holy Spirit, been really, really seeking the Lord. Um, about the gift of the Holy Spirit. I grew up in the Baptist church. I ain't always believing. But ever since I've been listening to you, I've been having the desire to have the Holy Spirit. I've been really sincerely praying to the Lord. And then when I seen that water coming out of my dishwasher, and then I thought about that scripture, but I don't understand what it exactly means. So that's my question. Can you please explain what that scripture means um, um, about the water the, out of your belly? Flows rivers of living water. Can you please explain that, please, sir, uh, on your broadcast or um, when you have church service? 
and so I can see it. Please, sir. Thank you. And so sorry. It took me so long to explain myself. I get nervous talking on the phone. But you have a blessed day. Bless you and your family. And I thank the Lord. I always thank the Lord for even letting me come across your um your YouTube channel because I remember back, I think it was 2016 or 17, when I prayed to God to reveal things to me, so many questions I don't have an answer to that I can't um, get to understand them for myself, and I just didn't handle what I could go to. So I was praying to God to please send somebody to me, and then he let me come across your YouTube channel, and I know it was from God. So I, you know, I'm learning, and I want to continue learning, but I'm the kind of person I need things broke down to explain. Like, um, I, I really have a hard time. All right, sister. You good. Thank God for you. Let me explain out of that belly shall flow rivers of living water. It ain't got nothing to do with the water in your washing machine or your dishwasher. Not at all. This is some living water here. You understand? This is some living water. This was prophecy first, sister. Give me Isaiah, son, 12 and 3. I want Isaiah 12 and 3, and I want Isaiah 44 and 3. This was prophecy first, and then it's going to come to pass. It actually came to pass on the day of Pentecost. But listen to Isaiah 12 and that verse 3 first, Bracey. What did it say, son? Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Listen, Isaiah is prophesying with joy shall you draw what, Bracey? Shall ye draw water. Water going to be drawn from where? Out of the wells of salvation. In other words, the one that is responsible for your salvation is going to give you some water. You understand? And the water he going to give you is not natural water. Amen. Isaiah 44, that verse 3. Isaiah going to prophesy again. What did he say, Bracey? For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. I will pour water upon who, Bracey? Upon him that is thirsty. Did it say thirsty? Thirsty. So you got to be thirsty to get this water. Amen. The Bible said what, son? For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. I will pour water on him that is thirsty. And floods upon the dry ground. And floods upon the dry ground. Give me John, son, chapter 7. And we're going to start reading at verse 37. Remember, he said he's going to pour water on him that is thirsty. On them that is thirsty. What did it say, John 7, 37? In the last day, that great day of the feast. That great day of the feast. Jesus stood and cried, saying. Jesus stood and cried, saying what? If any man thirst. If any man thirst. Isaiah said to them that are thirsty. The Bible said, if any man thirst. Let him come unto me and drink. Jesus said, let him come unto me and drink. What he, did he say? He that believeth on me. He that believeth on me. As the scripture hath said. How must he believe? As the scripture hath said. And that's the son of God declaring you must believe on him as the scripture hath said. What did it say, Bracey? Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. What kind of water? Living water. Sister, that water in your washing machine or dishwasher, or dishwasher it's not living. No, sir. No, it ain't living. My God, my, it's going to drain out and go on the, out through the sewage. Do you understand? This water Jesus is talking about is living water. What did it say, son? But this spake he of the Spirit. What was he talking about, Bracey? Of the Spirit. He was talking about the Spirit. Which they that believe on him. Which they that believe on him. Should receive. Should receive. Should receive. So he's talking about living water that'll flow out of thy belly. Give me John 14, son. Let's get the woman at the well. Let me say, sister, you said you, said you were seeking the Lord for the Holy Ghost. When you receive the Holy Ghost, that scripture will be a whole lot plainer to you then. Amen. Then you will understand when you receive the Holy Ghost because it's like rivers of living water that's flowing up out of you. When that Bible said rivers of living water, Amen. you can feel it. That's right. And let me tell you something. I feel it in my belly. Amen. Just like the Bible said. I feel it moving down in my belly. Right in my gut. I can feel it moving. Rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit. Bible said, of which them that believe on him should receive. John 14 said, what? Jesus answered and said unto her. Jesus answered and said to her, what? If thou knowest the gift of God. If you knew the gift of God. And who it is that said to thee, give me to drink. And who it is that said to you to give me something to drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him. Jesus said, then you would have asked of me. And he would have given thee living water. What kind of water? Living water. The Son of God said. You would have asked of me, and I would have gave you some living water. Living water. 
That water in your dishwasher is not living. It's not alive. What's in Ella Murray tonight is living water. I can feel it moving. It's on the inside of me. All right? So when you receive the Holy Ghost, you will have a better understanding of John chapter 7, verse 38, the living water. All right? Twin, if you would, give me caller number nine, son. Caller number nine. Once you get number nine, let it air, brother. Verse number, I'm sorry, it's number 10, twin. Number 10. Number 10. Hello, Pastor Murray. This is Miss Fisher from Birmingham, Alabama. Hadn't talked with you or spoke to you in a minute, but I'm watching. I cannot do anything else but just watch. I, I am just addicted to, to your broadcast. It's always so good and informative. I just had a question of, concerning the covering. I, of the uh, head for women and uh, I understand but I don't think I might understand completely I was just kind of wondering is that when a pray in public or just pray at uh, I mean anytime is for his silence to herself her head should be covered or uh, as for instance if she's uh, maybe at work and um, uh, decide that she just want to say uh, thanks to God or, uh, or the Son, uh, Jesus Christ, or just driving down the road and just want to say something. Should uh, any communication be that uh, the head of a woman should be covered when speaking to God or uh, the, the Son, Jesus Christ. I was a little confused about that. I, I understood, but um, but I wasn't sure that I was understanding fully. But um, I will listen, and uh, hopefully I can get that cleared up, and and then uh, maybe that'll help me to enlighten that as far as the head covering. I just was kind of confused if speaking at all to God and Jesus Christ uh, is supposed to be covered. Thank you so much. Enjoying all that you're doing. You're just wonderful. I, I uh, don't have a church home. I feel like you are my my home church because I, I, I look forward to seeing and, and listening to what all you, you have to say. I have learned so much and enjoying every one of your broadcasts that I've seen and it's enough on the, the website or Facebook that you can hear something every day. Don't really have to wait till the Sunday or Wednesday. Just go back and, and uh, read some of the messages and the services that you've done in the past, uh, not just yesterday, but years uh, uh, ago. So just wanted to touch base with you about that. Hope everyone is well along with you and your church family. And I'll talk to you when I can. Thanks so much. God bless your mother, Fisher. We thank God for you. Birmingham, Alabama. Mother, we will be in contact with you. But we're going to answer your question on tonight. First Corinthians 11 and at verse 3, Bracey. First Corinthians 11 and at verse 3. What did it say, son? But I would have you know. That what? That the head of every man is Christ. Head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. Head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. This is God's order here. God's order here. Read that again, Brace. But I will have the head of every man is Christ. Head of every man. Christ is above. Christ is the head. Christ is over every man. Read it. And the head of the woman is the man. The man is over. He's head of the woman. What did the Bible say? And the head of Christ is God. Christ's head is God the Father. God the Father is above. He's over Christ. That's why Christ said, my father is greater than I. What did it say, son? Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. Every man praying. That's me. That's Bracey. That's all the men. Praying or prophesying, having his head covered. Dishonoreth his head. Dishonoreth his head. You're dishonoring your head. Our head is Christ. You dishonor Christ if we pray Unto God uncovered. What did it say? But every woman that prayeth or prophesy. Or if we pray unto God covered, I should say, as men. If we pray unto God covered as men, we dishonor Christ. 
What did it say, sir? But every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered. But if the woman pray or prophesy with her head uncovered. Dishonoreth her head. She dishonoreth her head. She's not only dishonoring the man, but she's also dishonoring Christ. She's dishonoring God because this is God's order. When a sister pray mother, any female praying unto God, whether you're driving down the street, whether you're in your house, whether you just, whatever you're doing, if you're going to talk to God, whether it be through prayer or the Bible going to say prophecy, your head as a female must be covered. I cannot come behind the scripture and make an exception and say, well, except in this situation, God understand, you know, God, God, he, you know, it's all right. And this is, no, I can't do that. I've had men say to me, well, I work on a job that required me to wear a hard hat. So I can't take my hard hat off because I'll lose my job. Well, you pray when you're able to take your hat off, but I cannot give you authority or permission to go against what we read out the Bible. I can't do that. If the Bible said, man, your head must not be covered, then that's what I got to preach. And if it says, sister, your head must be covered, that's what I got to preach. Read it, son. What is that? But every woman that prayeth or prophesies with her head uncovered. Prayeth or prophesied with what? Her head uncovered. Her head uncovered. Dishonoreth her head. She's dishonoring her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. Notice, Paul is letting you know he knows she got hair. For those who want to say the only covering she got to have is hair. Paul says she dishonored her head as if she were shaven. So he's letting you know, okay, I know she got hair. But if she pray with it uncovered, she dishonored it as if she had cut it all off. It's an equal dishonor. What did it say, Brace? For if the woman be not a covered, if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. Let, if, what is Paul saying? If you don't want to cover it up, cut it off. That's what Paul is saying. What did he say, son? But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaved. Paul said, but now, but if it be a shame for you to cut it off or be bald head, let her be covered. Cover it up. Cover it up. Let me tell you something. During the time of prayer, the Lord wants all the glory. Your hair, your long hair, sister, the Bible said, is given to her for her glory. But during prayer, the Lord wants the glory. Listen to me. Don't be so caught up in your glory that you won't cover your glory and give him the glory during prayer and, and, and prophecy. Do you understand? Praying or prophesying, sister, your head must be covered. Amen. That ain't Murray's commandment. That's chapter and verse that you can read. All right? I hope and pray you got an understanding. If not, mother, we'll be talking, or you can call back and I'll go more in depth into it. All right? Thank God for your mother. And we, we long to meet your mother, Fisher. Mother Fisher has been supporting this ministry for years. She's faithful. Never met her before in my life. I think she's about 75 years old. Never met her before in my life. Thank God for your mother and be encouraged. All right? George Swindle Sr. writes, I live in Jemison, Alabama. I'm looking for one of your nearby assemblies. Jemison is in Chilton County. Well, brother, we don't have an assembly in Chilton County. Mobile, Alabama. I'm not sure how far it is from Jemison, but uh, just Google Mobile, Alabama, 3550 Pleasant Valley Road, and come on down here and hang out with us, brother. All right? Thank God for you watching the program. Next email. Greetings, Ella Murray. My name is Darnell Jenkins, and I reside in Reno, Nevada. I had a couple of questions for you in regards to biblical discussions. Is biblical discussions even in the Bible? Is it a sin to involve money? I recently unsubscribed from an unhealthy biblical, well, so-called biblical discussion platform because the person who runs it has no love for the word of God and it's just entertainment. People placing $10,000 offers to people if they can prove the nature of the son of God. Fellow who runs it, sending himself text messages, acting like he you, and showing people. So he's sending himself text messages and acting like he me. He write, it was too much. So I unsubscribed them. Is biblical discussions a sin? 
That kind is. <laughs> that, that kind is, brother. It is sin. Because you go, look, you involve yourself in something that Paul said, withdraw yourself from. Paul said, withdraw yourself from that type of foolishness. All right, Brace, give me that on 1 Timothy 6. And at verse 3. To sit down with someone with the right spirit, brother, to discuss the scripture, no sin. But fellas like you're talking about, yes, brother. Paul going to tell you plainly, withdraw yourself. Withdraw yourself from these fellas. 1 Timothy 6 and 3 said what, Brayson? 1 Timothy chapter 6 and at verse 3. What did he say, sir? If any man teach otherwise. I want you to hear this, Nevada. Paul said, if any man teach otherwise. And consent not to wholesome words. Notice he said wholesome words. Even? Even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Stop a moment. They're not consenting to wholesome words. And they don't care for the Lord Jesus Christ. They say he did. What did it say, son? And to the doctrine which is according to godliness. What's his, con what's his condition? He is proud. What's the condition of them fellas? He is proud knowing nothing. Oh, they proud and don't know nothing, Paul said. They just as proud and don't know nothing. What did he say, son? But doting about questions and strife. Doting about, doting about. They ask a question before you can answer, they just jumped over here. Before you can answer that, they go on. They, they, look, it, 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 Paul said they're just doting about. They're doting about what they're doing, son. But doting about questions and strifes of words. Questions and strifes of words. Where of cometh envy. This is going to be the result of it, Nevada. Envy. Strife. Strife. Railings. Railings. Evil just, sermons. Just, just going back and forth. Railings. Evil, evil what? Evil sermons. Read it. Perverse disputing of men. Wait, wait, wait. What kind of disputing? Perverse disputings. What kind of disputing? Perverse disputings. Perverse disputings. How, how are they minds? Of men of corrupt minds. What's the condition of their minds? Corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Their minds are corrupt, Nevada, and they don't have the truth. Paul said they're destitute of the truth. So, and listen, supposing what? Supposing that gain is godliness. How should we interact with them? From such, withdraw thyself. Uh-uh, debate them. Withdraw thyself. Have a biblical discussion with them. Withdraw thyself. Nevada, Elder Murray, I don't answer their calls. I don't return them fellas' calls. I don't answer their emails. I throw them in the trash. And when they call me and leave messages, I delete them. I obey the scripture. I withdraw myself. I don't deal with them, brother. And I advise you, Nevada, to do the same. All right? Next email. David Harold Johnson writes, Dear Elder Murray, I have another question. Where are the dead now, both saved and unsaved? In John 5, 25, it says those who died in Christ, they will hear the voice of the Lord and rise. That is the first resurrection. The rest of the dead shall be resurrected in the second resurrection. So are they all asleep till then? John 5, 25, son, said what? St. John chapter 5. And at verse 25, what did it say, Brace? Verily, verily, I say unto you. Truly, truly, I say unto you. The hour is coming. The hour is coming. And now is. When what? When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. The dead going to hear what? The voice of the Son of God. They, they, Brace, how can they hear the voice of the Son of God if he's dead? What did the Bible say, son? The dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. No, the voice of God the Father. The voice of the Son of God. And what's going to happen? And they that hear shall live. They that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself. As the Father hath life in himself. So hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. And what else did he do? And hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Read it, Brace. Marvel not at this. Don't be surprised at this. For the hour is coming. The hour is coming. In which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Stop a moment. You ask the question. What about the unsaved dead? Okay. The Bible said how many that's in the grave? All that are in the graves. Did it say all? All. That are where? That are in the graves. What's they going what's going to happen? Shall hear his voice. Okay. It's saying all that's in the graves. All of them are in the graves, brother. All of them are resting. The dead in Christ are resting in the presence of the Lord, according to the scripture. Not in heaven because they they're not going there to after judgment. But according to scripture, yes, they're resting in the presence of the Lord, and we can spell that out with scripture. What did it say? All that are in the grave shall hear his voice. And what's going to happen? And shall come forth. 
All that's in the grave gonna hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good. They that have done good. Unto the resurrection of life. Unto the resurrection of life. But wait a minute now. That's those that have done good. They gonna come forth to the resurrection of life. But you got some other dead folks there. What about them? And they that have done evil. They coming forth too. They that have done evil. Unto the resurrection of damnation. They all are resting until that time. Do you understand? They're they, 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 they in the grave until that time. All right? We can spell it out. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Philippians chapter 1, round about verse 21. You know, Paul talked about being absent from the body, present with the Lord. Paul said, my God, Philippians chapter 1, for him to die is gain. He talked about departing from this life, going and to be with Christ in the presence of the Lord. He talked about, in other words, he wasn't afraid of death. He said it was more needful for him to stick around for the sake of the people. So when one died, they do go in the presence of the Lord and rest in the presence of the Lord. But for us going into heaven, not unto judgment. Not unto judgment. The Bible said we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that we may give an account for all the deeds done in our body, whether it be good or bad. All right? Next email. That's good. Next email. Horace O'Brien writes, Hello, Ella Murray. I have been following you on YouTube. Recently, and I well, I have been following you on YouTube recently, and I wish to thank you for reaching out to me while I was in Jamaica. As I explained to you then, I believe through the word of God that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and I would like to be baptized the correct way and strive for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm aware that you plan to visit Virginia from October 15th through the 16th. Virginia is near to Maryland where I live. And I'm planning to attend both services. However, I am unsure if you will be having a baptismal service. Whether or not, I am still planning to attend. If there is a baptismal service, I would gladly use the opportunity to get baptized. Please be encouraged in the word and continue to preach the truth to, to God's people. Respectfully, Horace Bryan. Brother Bryan, we thank God for you, brother. And yes, we'll be in Virginia, Lord willing, October 15th and 16th. And brother... Every place we go, we baptize. Every place. You understand? Every place as we travel throughout the world, baptism in the name of Jesus Christ will take place. All right? We, I, I got a call in my office out of Georgia uh, before we went to Georgia. I didn't get the message until I got back to Mobile, but a sister was calling asking, will I be baptizing in Georgia? Well, I was out of town. I couldn't get a message. So when I got back, I called her back. She didn't make the service because... She didn't know whether I was going to be baptizing or not. Well, every place we go, we baptize. Every place. So that's automatic. You understand? When one hear the word, repent. They want to go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. As long as they are believing the Son of God, we'll take you down right then and right there. All right? We thank God for it. All right? Next question. Mary. Next email. She writes, do you believe Jesus and God are one? Yes, we do. We do believe Jesus and God are one. We believe it, but we understand what the scripture is saying now. John 10, 30, son. What did the Bible say? I and my father are one. We believe that, right? Mary, we believe Jesus, the son of God, and God the father. We believe that they are one. Mm -hmm. I said they mm -hmm. are one. But they're not the same one now. Amen. Do you hear what I just said, Mary? I said we believe that one, but not the same one. John 10 30 said what I and my father are one I and my father are one Mary one him simply means in agreement mm -hmm. unity do you understand father ain't contradicting the son son ain't contradicting the father the son said I do always those things that please the father they are one they are in agreement first Corinthians 3 5 let me explain it to you my sister I want first Corinthians 3 twice uh, 3 5 and I want St. John 17 20 I want to give Mary an understanding. Yes, we believe Jesus and God are one, but they're not the same one. When the Bible say one, it's dealing with unity. First Corinthians, son, chapter three, and that verse number five. What did it say, Brace? Who then is Paul? Who is Paul? And who is Apollos? Who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believe. What did it say, son? Even as the Lord gave to every man. What did it say? I have planted. Paul said, I planted. Apollos watered. Apollos watered. But God gave the increase. God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything. Neither is he that planteth anything. Neither he that water. Neither he that water. But God that giveth the increase. What did it say, son? Now he that planteth and he, he that water. He that planteth and he that watereth. Are one. Wait a minute, Brace. 
He that planted and he that watereth a what? A one. Paul plant Apollos water. The Bible says he that planted, he that watered, or how many? Or one. Is Paul Apollos? No, sir. Is Apollos Paul? No, sir. The answer is no. But yet they're one, meaning they are in agreement, unity. Just like John 10 30, Jesus said, I and my father are one. What is he saying? In agreement, unity. John 17 and 20. What did it say, Brace? Neither pray I for the for these alone. Jesus said, Neither pray I. Jesus praying to the Father. He said, Neither pray I for these alone. But for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Read it, Brace. That they all may be one. Wait a minute. All that they all they all may be one. Are you me? Amen. Am I you? No, sir. But we're supposed to be one. Amen. When the Bible saying one is talking about unity here, my God, man, it don't mean the son became the father, father became the son. The Bible said all of us are supposed to be one. Amen. What the Bible says, son? That they all may be one. Read it. As thou, Father, art in me. As thou, Father, in me. And I in thee. Read it. That they also may be one in us. One in who? In us. One in us? In us. 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 Did Jesus just say us? Amen. What did he say, son? That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Read it. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Read it. That they may be one. They may be how many? One. Read it, Brace. Even as we are one. We? We. Are what? Are one. Let the church say amen. Amen. That's the word of God. I hope you got to understand it, Mary. K. Black writes, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for your ministry. I've been blessed by your preaching by you preaching the word. My question is, I have been told a dead body defiles the sanctuary. Is that true? Thank you in advance. Some of them are trying to condemn us for having a funeral, y'all. That's what that is all about. They, they saw the funeral online and they, they railing cause we had a funeral in the church. Well, let me tell you something. We're gonna have another one this side. And let me tell y'all something that's got a problem with it. If you die, invite me. I'll come preach yours too. Right in your church. Do you understand? You don't know what you're talking about. Listen, this building ain't the church. That's right. Do you hear what I just said? <laughs> Y'all don't know what you're talking about. The Look here. The building is not the church. This building can burn down tonight. Did the church burn down? No, sir. The church, look here. The you can't burn the church down. The, look, Jesus said the gates of hell won't prevail against the church. We got insurance on this building because it's subject to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So the building is not the church. We are the church. Amen. Acts 17, 24. Let's help these devils. Let's help them. Do you understand? Let's help them. Elmer, don't pay them fellas no mind. Do you understand? I, look here. I don't pay them no mind. They got that foolishness from S.C. Johnson. That's where they got it from. They talking about the sixth chapter of the book of Numbers, vowing the vow of a Nazarite. And during that vow, you couldn't go after no dead body. Do you understand? Let me tell you something. During the vow of a Nazarite, you couldn't go after no dead body. Well, there's a whole lot of things you couldn't do while you was under that vow. Do you understand? But let me tell you something. That ain't got nothing to do with us today. Amen. Do you understand? Look here. You couldn't go near a dead body as long as you was under that vow. But we're going to see that Jesus said, and we're going to see that the apostles said. Mm -hmm. And if Jesus and the apostles said, then Murray is said. Do you understand? Acts 17, son, right about verse 24. What did the Bible say, son? God that made the world and all things therein. God that made the world and all things therein. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth. He is Lord of heaven and earth. Dwelleth not in, the, in temples made with hands. Wait a minute. He dwelleth not where? In temples made with hands. Wait a minute, Brayson. This place, this temple was made with hands. Dwelleth not in temples made with hands. You know what he dwell in? You and I. That's right. Not in temples made with hands. Do you understand? I can show you scripture where the church was in the wilderness. My God, man, no building, but the church was in the wilderness. Who was that? Them the people of God out in the wilderness. Do you understand? If all of us go out here in the street, the church is in the street. Amen. If all of us go over to Home Depot, the church is over at Home Depot. Amen. Look here, this past Saturday, the church was at the mountains. The church was in Stone Mountain. Amen. We weren't in no building, but the church was in Stone Mountain. Do you understand? You folks don't know what you're talking about. Acts 17, 24 again said what, Brace? God that made the world and all things therein. Read it. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth. 
dwelleth, dwelleth not in temples made not, with hands. Not in temples made with hands. Not in temples made with hands. Read it, son. Neither is worship with men's hands. You don't know what you're talking about. Give me uh, John, son. See, is that all I want? Or better yet, Luke. Luke 7, round about verse 11. Luke 7. And at verse 11, get verse 12 straight to the point. See, is that what I want? Hear me talking now. What did he say, Brace? Now, when he came now to the gate of, of the city. What happened? Behold, there was a dead man carried oh, out. Ho, 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 now. Jesus now came to the gate of the city. And what kind of man? There was a dead man. No, what, and what happened with the dead man? Carried out. Carried out? The only son of his mother. And what happened? And she was a widow. What happened? And much people of the city was with her. What happened? And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. And what he do? And said unto her, weep not. Don't cry. And he came and touched the buyer. Oh. He didn't touch it, did he? Break he it? touched the buyer. Well, is Jesus defiled? No, son. Did, is he defiled? In the sixth chapter of the book of Numbers, you couldn't go near a dead body while you was under that vow. Jesus went and he did what? And touched the buyer. And what happened? And they that bear him stood still. And what happened, Brace? And he said. What did he say? Young man, I say unto thee, arise. Young man, I say unto thee, do what? Arise. And what happened, Brace? And he that was dead. He that was dead. Sat up. Jesus not only went and touched him, he raised him from the dead. Amen. Now, if it was a sin to go near a dead body, did Jesus just say it? Did Jesus just say it? You folks don't know what you're talking about. 749, uh, uh, 849, son. Sister, what I want. Luke 8, round about verse 49. Luke 8, 49. This is Jairus' daughter. What happened, Brace? While he ex spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house. What happened? Saying to him, thy daughter is dead. Oh, so Jairus' daughter is what? Is dead. What happened, Brace? Trouble not the master. Don't trouble the master. But when Jesus heard it. What happened? He answered him saying. What? Fear not. Don't be afraid. Believe only. But believe only. And she shall be made whole. What did it say, son? And when he came into the, the house. What happened? He suffered no man to go in, save what? Peter and James and John. Peter, James, and John went in with him. And the father and the mother of the maiden. What happened, son? And all wept and bewailed her. Read it. But he said. What did he say? Weep not. Read it. She is not dead, but sleeping. Read it, Brace. And they laughed into scorn, knowing that she was dead. Read it, Brace. And he put them all out and took her by the hand. And well, Brace, come on. He ain't touched her, did he? Took her by the hand. He done touched a dead body? Amen. Well, I know Jesus got to be corrupt. <laughs> he got to be defiled. He done touched a dead body? They say you ain't supposed to go near the dead. Read it, Brace. And he, he put them all out and took her by the hand. Took her by the hand. And called, say. What did he say? Made arise. Made arise. And her spirit came again. And what happened, son? And she arose straightway. And what happened? And he commanded to give her meat. And what happened? And her parents were astonished. They was astonished. But he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. One time yet. Give me Acts 20 and round about verse 7, son. Y'all fellas, man, let me tell you something. Y'all are a waste of time. And I mean it. They're a waste of time. I got another, I got other emails concerning this, but I'm not even gonna read them because the false prophets' names who's on them. They want to hear their names. So I'm not even going to read them. It's dealing with the same thing. Let me say to the writer, I don't care what them false prophets say. Ella Murray don't care. Do you understand? I, I believe what I can read out the Bible. Amen. I preach the gospel. I preach the word of God in season and out of season. I preach the word of God wherever an opportunity is presented. The word of God that was preached at Brother Rice funeral. let me tell you, as a result of that word, let me tell you something. Much of that family came to me saying they will they want to start coming to church. Brother Wright's own son came to me and said that message touched my heart. He said, when I'm in town, I'm coming back to church. His sister came to me and told me, my God, man, I see why Brother Wright came to this church because of that word. Let me tell you, you folks don't know what you're talking about. Any opportunity is presented. The Bible said, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. You don't know what you're talking about. My God, a lot of times at a funeral, it's the only time many of these folks are coming to church. Preach the word. Take the opportunity to take that word and reach those people. You don't know what you're talking about. What did he say, son? Acts 20 and at verse 7. 
And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread. What did he say? Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow. So Paul is there with them. They came together to break bread. Paul preached unto them, and what happened? Ready to depart on the morrow, and right. continued his speech until midnight. What did he say, son? And there were many lights in the upper chamber. And what happened? Where they were gathered together. Read it, son. And there sat in the window a certain young, young man named Eutychus. Certain young man named who? Named Eutychus. What happened, Brace? Being fallen into a deep sleep. And? And as Paul was long preaching. So they gathered together, Paul preaching, and what happened to Eutychus? And fell down from the third loft. He fell from where, Brace? And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep. And what happened? And fell down from the third law. And what did he say, son? And was taken up dead. What did he say? And Paul went down and fell on him. And he was taken up how? Oh, taken up dead. So where they gathered at, he done fell, and now he's what, Brayson? Dead. Well, that place got to be contaminated now, don't it? I, Paul got to dismiss, and y'all get out of here. Because this place is defiled. Because we got a dead body in here. But what happened, Brace? And Paul went down and fell on him. Did Paul go and fall on him? Fell on him. Paul fell on him. And embracing him. And embracing him. What happened? Said, trouble not yourselves. What do you do, Brace? For his life is in him. Paul raised him from the dead. Don't pay them fellas no mind, brother. You know, if that's all they got to preach against having a funeral, it's because they don't have a message. They don't have nothing to preach. So they coming up with stuff to preach. Elder Murray would preach the word in season and out of season. If one of them die and they family invite me, I'm going to come preach their film. Next email. Praise the Lord, saints. This is Mr. and Mrs. DeShields from York, Pennsylvania. We watch the broadcast daily because we refuse to go to any of these churches up here in York because they don't preach the Son of God. And that's what we believe in. We see that you had people from Maryland, do you know of any church close to us that believe in the Son of God? Maryland is very close to us. God willing, we are planning to attend one of your services very soon. We are blessed by the true teaching, and we thank God for you and everyone that follows the Son of God, Jesus Christ. The closest place I can recommend you all to is Community Church of our Lord Jesus Christ in Seaford, Delaware. That's 26856 Lonesome Road. That's Seaford, Delaware. That's Ella Thorn Pitts. When you go, tell them Ella Murray recommended you to come. All right? Thank God for you watching. And we'll be in Virginia at mid-October. Hope to see y'all during that time. Next email. Good evening, Ella Murray. My name is Elder Brian Liggins from Baltimore, Maryland. I love your teachings and share your passion for sound doctrine. I have a question for you. What does the phrase because of the angels at the end of 1 Corinthians 11 and 10 mean? If you can answer that for me, I would truly appreciate it. I've consulted with other clergymen and no one can provide me with an answer at all. God bless you, man of God. And I pray you continue to be victorious over the kingdom of darkness. 1 Corinthians basis, chapter 11. And start reading, if you would, round about. Start at verse 7. Let's get a good understanding. What did it say, son? Run fast. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. This is dealing with a woman covering her head. What did it say? For as much as he is the image and glory of God. What did it say? But the woman is the glory of the man. The woman is the glory of the man. But the man is not of the woman. The woman is not, man is not of the woman. But the woman of the man. The woman is of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman. But? But the woman for the man. Read it, Brace. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head. This, for this cause, ought the woman to have power where? On her head. Why? Because of the angels. Because of who? The angels. Because of who? The angels. All right. What's the purpose of the angels? What is the job or the duty of the angels? It said because of the angels. Give me Hebrew 1 7. See, the purpose, the job of the angels, what, what is God's purpose for the angels to do? Hebrews chapter 1 at verse 7, then we go on to verse 13. Remember, it said, because of the angels. Now, what's the purpose of angels? What are angels first? Hebrew 1, 7. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits. Of the angels, he saith, talking about God the Father. How do he make the angels? Who maketh his angels spirits. The angels was made spirits. These are spirits. Angels are spirits. Verse 13, Hebrew 1, 13. 
What's the purpose of the angel? But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? The answer to that is none of them. He didn't say that to none of the angels, sit on my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. He only said that to the Son of God. Next verse. Are they not all ministering spirits? The angels are what kind of spirits? Ministering spirits. Ministering spirits. Ministering here don't mean to preach. It means servants. The, the, the spirits whose purpose is to serve in whatever capacity God have them to serve. The Bible said what, Brace? Are they not all ministering spirits? What's the purpose? Sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. The angels are sent forth to minister unto them that are heirs, those that will inherit salvation. Angels' job is to minister, serve, in whatever capacity God purpose for them to serve. Now watch this. Give me Psalms 34 and 7. Psalms 34 and that verse 7. The Bible says she ought to have her head covered for the angels, even for the sake of the angels. Angels are ministering spirits. We have angels round about us. 34 and 7 of Psalms said what? The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Wait a minute. The angels encamp round about them that do what? That fear him. So you got the people of God. You got angels encamp round about them for the sake of doing what? And delivereth them. Delivereth them? Amen. So the angels, God dispatched them for our deliverance, for our protection. If a if a sister belong to God and she's going to obey the word of God, then her head must be covered. It must be covered when she pray or prophesy. What it looked like for an angel there protecting her, but yet she's going contrary or opposite of the word of God. If the angel is there and camping round about her to deliver her, but yet the angels see her doing the opposite of what the word of God required her. How is he going to protect her? How is he going to defend or protect her? Because of the angels. Angels are camped round right about the saints for their protection. 34 7 again said, What? The angel of the Lord encampeth round right about them that fear him. To do what? And deliver them. The purpose of the angels is to deliver the saints of God. If God see fit, the dispatch angels, but yet we as the people of God got to be in the will of God. If the woman is there praying, her head is not covered, she's praying or prophesying, then she's out of the will of God. How is an angel going to protect you if you're out of the will of God? The head covering shows even the angels that you're under subjection. It shows even the angels that you're under submission. Their job is to protect the people of God. The angels of God and captains round about them, my God, man, that fear him to deliver them. Second, uh, Second Kings, real fast, Tracy. 615. I want to show you something. I want to show you something with the angels, the purpose of the angels. We have angels round about us. And if those, the children of God that believe that, then you won't, you won't need a security team. Not if you know you got angels around. You don't need a security team. Watch. The prophet, 2 Kings 6.15, run fast, race. And when the servant of the, of, of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city, both with the horses and chariots. Okay, you got the servant of the man of God. You got him here, and he looking, and a host of compassed the city. You got all these folks coming after the man of God and his servant. What did it say? And his servant said unto him. What did the servant say? Alas, my master. Alas, my master. How shall we do? How shall we do? And he answered, fear not. Don't be afraid. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Read it, son. And Elisha prayed and said. What did he say? Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Open his eyes. That he may see. That he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. Well, the prophet knew the protection that they had. But the young man couldn't see. So he asked the Lord to open the young man's eyes. And when he did what, Brace? And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. What did he see? And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. The mountains was full of what? Horses and chariots of fire. Where were they? Round about Elisha. The horses full of, the, 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 the mountains full of what races? Full of horses and chariots of fire. And they were round about where? Elisha. These are angels. These are angels there to protect the man of God. Do you understand? So if a man of God truly believed that, he don't need security around it. He's got angels compassed round about him to protect him and deliver them. Do you understand? Now, what are the chariots here? 
Psalm 68, 17. Watch this. You had all these chariots of fire round about the prophet. What are the chariots of fire? Psalm 68, 17 said what? The chariots of God are 20,000. The chariots of God are what? 20,000. 20,000. Even thousands of angels. Thousands of what? Angels. Thousands of what? Angels. That's what it was round about Elijah. So when the Bible said she ought to have her head covered because of the angels. Angels are ministering spirits sent forth for our protection. The Bible said they encamped around about us to deliver us. But yet we got to be in the will of God. We got to be in the will of God. If a woman is there praying or prophesying with her head uncovered, my God, she's out of the will of God. So how is an angel of God going to protect her if he sees she's out of the will of God? Like, likewise with myself. If I'm a child of God, as a man, I can't be there praying with my head covered because I'm out of the will of God. The angels are ministering spirits, but we got to be in the will of God. All right? I hope you got to understand it. We're coming to a close here. Two more and we're out of here. Could you please, better yet, let me get this last one here. Dear Pastor, I need some advice. When I was 23 years old, I was raped by a man I worked with. I became extremely depressed and tried to kill myself. I was never allowed to talk about it and was told to just drop it, forget about it, and move on. Now, 32 years later, I'm checking Facebook and see him on there. He is married, has children and grandchildren. His life is fine and dandy. Meanwhile, I am clinically depressed, overweight, and have tried to kill myself twice. My husband died of cancer after only five years of marriage. We were not able to have children because of what happened to me. I have had five surgeries in five years and cannot work because I still have health problems. I say all this to ask, why does God let good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people? I have always gone to church and was saved at a young age. He refused to have anything to do with God. I have forgiven him for what he did because I believe that is what God wants me to do. It is not fair. What can I do to get on, to get over this? How do I get over this and get on with my life? How do I get a life? I do not know how to be happy. I teach a ladies Sunday school class at my church. And I, I, am, I am also involved in the ladies ministry and a ladies Bible study. But I am still very lonely and depressed. I am sorry to bother you with this, but I really need some advice. Thank you, and God bless you. So, so let me say this to you. I appreciate your email, and Ella Murray want to help you. I feel your pain. I see the pain in your letter. You've gone through a lot. You ask, how do you get over this? How do you get on with your life? How do you get a life? Sister, it starts with forgiveness. That's where it starts at. You say in your letter, I have forgiven him for what he did because I believe that that is what God wants me to do. Sister, I want you to hear Ella Murray. I'm here to help you. I can tell by the language of your letter, you haven't forgiven him. There's some unforgiveness there. You state here, 32 years later, I'm checking Facebook and see him on there. He is married, has children and grandchildren. His life is fine and dandy. Meanwhile, I am clinically depressed. Your statement here lets me know that you haven't truly forgiven him. Because if you had truly forgiven him, sister, then you would be happy that his life is fine and dandy. You will be praying for him that his life continue to be fine and that. Sister, it starts with true forgiveness. You ask, how can you go on and have a life? It starts with you forgiving him. Not only for 
his sake, but for your sake. You forgive him, sister. You clear yourself of that weight because right now you carry him around. And right now, sister, in all reality, he's still holding you in bondage because you're carrying him around. The only way you're going to free yourself, you got to lay him aside. The only way you can truly lay him aside is truly forgive him. How do you move on? Give me my, uh, Mark's 11. Give me Mark chapter 11, and I want you to start reading at verse 24. It starts with forgiveness, not only for his sake, but for your sake, that you can truly move on. Do you understand? I feel your pain, sister. I feel your pain. But you've got to get to a point of true forgiveness so you can free him and free yourself, and then you can move on. Mark 11, 24, son, what did it say? Therefore I say unto you. I say unto you. What things soever you desire when you pray. Whatever you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them. Sister, you want happiness, you want freedom, you want to be able to move on. The Bible said whatever you pray for, believe that you're going to receive it. And you shall have it. And you're going to have it. And when you stand praying. But it comes with condition. Here's the condition. What did it say? And when you stand praying. When you stand praying. Forgive. Forgive. When you stand praying, you got to be willing to forgive. It didn't say what it was. It's whatever it is. You got to be willing to forgive. Read it, Brayson. And when you stand praying, forgive. When you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any. Sister, you got an ought against it. And let me tell you, it's understandable because of what he did to you. But don't let him, don't let what he did to you hold you in the past. Don't let it hold you back there. He's going on, but yet you being held back there by what he did to you. In reality, he still got control over you. The only way you can truly move on, you got to forgive it from your heart. What did it say, Brace? And when you stand praying, forgive. When you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any. If you have ought against any. That your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespass. That your Father in heaven may forgive you your trespass. What did it say, Brace? But if you do not forgive. But if you do not forgive. Neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespass. In order to free yourself, you've got to be able to forgive. The load will get a whole lot lighter, sister, when you truly forgive him. Matthew 5, son. See, is that what I want? Matthew chapter 5. I want you, sister, Ella Murray is going to be praying for you. I hope and pray that you take these words and meditate upon them. Matthew 5, brace start right about verse 44, son. Matthew 5 and at verse 44. Listen carefully, sister. What did it say? But I say unto you. I say unto you. Love your enemies. Love, despite what he did to you, sister, love him. What did it say? Love your enemies. Read it. Bless them that curse you. Bless them that did what? That curse you. That curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Do good to who? To them that hate you. Read it, please. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Pray for him, sister. Pray for him. You got to get to a point that you can pray for him and you mean it from your heart. What did it say, brother? That ye may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. When you get to that point, then you are a true child of God. Read it, Brayson. For he maketh his son to rise. Stop. You ask the question. Why does, good, why, why does God let good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people? What did the Bible say? For he maketh his son to rise on the evil. He maketh his son to rise on the evil. And on the good. And on the good. What else? And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. God blessed both. He blessed the sinners and the saints. He reigned on the just as well as on the unjust. That's what God do. That's why he allowed good things to happen to, as you said, bad people because he's a merciful God. 
You understand? But sister, despite how things may look, Ecclesiastes son 812. I want you to hear me well. We're coming to a close. I'll save this last email to next week. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and at verse number 12. What did it say, Brace? Though a sinner do evil a hundred times. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times. That sinner keep on doing evil. He keep on doing evil. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times. And his days be prolonged. And it looks like life is good for him. His days be prolonged. What did the Bible say? Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God. Don't look at the wicked and conclude it looks like everything is good for them. The word of God done spoken here. Read that again, Brayson. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times. And his days be prolonged. And his days be prolonged. Yet surely I know that it shall be well with, the, with them that fear God. It's going to be well with them that fear God. And which, what else? Which fear before him. Which fear before him. But it shall not be well with it the wicked. It shall not be well with the wicked. God got a day where he going to repay the wicked for all their deeds. A day is coming. Sister, you be encouraged. Elder Murray is going to be praying for you. Call my office. I would love to talk with you. I would love to pray with you. That the Lord allow you to overcome this thing. Don't let what he what, what don't let what he did to you in the past hold you in the past while he done moved on. You got to lay it aside. You got to lay him aside. That way you can move on. I'm gonna say this and we're gonna get out, we're gonna get out of here tonight. I done taught the church this, and it's along the same lines. Somebody owe you money and they won't pay you back. And you know they're not going to pay you back. But yet they promise to pay you back. So you walk around with bitterness starting to grow in you because they got your money. They won't pay. They come in your company, they look at you and won't say nothing about your money. So, you, so bitterness starting to grow up in you because they owe you and won't pay you back. I taught the church. The way you free yourself, give it to them. Give it to them. Let them know you don't owe me nothing. I'm going to give you that. That's yours. You don't owe me nothing. Take that and let that be a blessing to you. What did you do, Murray? You just freed them, but not only them, you freed yourself. Because now you can't walk around with bitterness growing up in you, I want my money. No, you gave it to them. They weren't going to pay you back no way. Do you hear what I said? You know they weren't going to pay you back no way. But you did that to free yourself. To, that way you're not walking around this stuff growing in you because they won't get my money. No, give it to them. Give it to them. That way you're going to free them and you're going to free yourself. Rather than walking around with all this stuff growing up in you and they going on about their bed that they ain't thinking about it, they know they ain't going to pay you no one. Free them of the debt. Sister, forgive the man. However hard it may be, forgive it. That you may free him and yourself. That you can move on. All right? We're praying for you. Be encouraged. Feel free to call my office. Don't forget, saints of God, that will be attending Jamaica. If you're not staying at the resort, you need to call and give your name or email your name to the email address over my head, just letting us know you're going to attend. That way, your name can be presented to the resort, all right? You that's staying at the resort, you already registered because you're staying at the resort, all right? You that is coming for the church service, you want the group rate for the church, email the church. Just simply tell us you need a form for registration to stay at the resort to get the church group rate. One of our secretaries will email it to you or we'll drop it in the mail and mail it to you. All right. So you can fill out the form. The form has the church name on it. That way they know you with the church and you get the rate that has been given to the church. All right. 
We thank God for all of you. James Hernandez, I got your email in my hand. Can't get to it tonight. Time is gone. I will do my best, Brother Hernandez, to make yours the first one next week. I'll do my best to remember that. Pray that I can remember that. All right? Thank God for y'all. Until Sunday, better yet, until Saturday, we'll broadcast the preaching of the funeral on Saturday. Just to preach on Saturday. All right? And all my enemies that say we shouldn't have a funeral in the church, y'all tune in. Don't miss it. All right? Until Saturday, God bless you and peace be unto you. Thanks, we thank God for.